So it's a meditation in the kind of classic sense of a meditation. So rather than, um, you know, being full of instructions to sit calmly and um, focus on your breathing, it's a reading and it is set to some very beautiful, gentle music. And the invitation really is to stop whatever else you're doing and to spend the next six minutes um, just really listening to these words and see what it sparks for you. Welcome to the podcast that's all about deepening our self-awareness with profound self-compassion. I'm Henny. I write, coach and speak about how exploring our inner world can transform how we experience our outer world, all founded on a bedrock of self-love. Settle in and listen and see where the episode takes you. Hello, my darlings. So today is episode 10 of season 9, which means we've come to the end of another season and I'm going to take a little break. Um, Don't know how long for. I'm always a bit um, loose about these things, Um, but I'll be back in a few weeks. Um, Maybe less, maybe more, who knows. Um, But I wanted to return turn our attention today to the subject of change and it's something that I used to talk about quite a lot on the podcast and for me compassion is an absolutely fundamental component of change and I was creating some new meditations for Insight Timer And I came across uh, an old journal entry um, from day 48, and I'm somewhere in the high 500s now, so it was quite a while ago. And it just really resonated with me, the, the truth of what I had written all those years ago, and I felt it might be a lovely thing to share here and to use to close this um, season of the podcast. So it's a meditation in the kind of classic sense of a meditation. So rather than, um, you know, being full of instructions to sit calmly and um, focus on your breathing, it's a reading and It is set to some very beautiful, gentle music. And the invitation really is to stop whatever else you're doing and to spend the next six minutes um, just really listening to these words and see what it sparks for you. And you can hear... um, the introduction that I've included on the Insight Timer version of this as well. I've I've kept it in here for you. Um, and, you know, and I share in that introduction that this is an unedited piece of journaling. And whenever I share my journaling, it's unedited because I think there's something so beautiful about the way we can start with what might be a convoluted set of thoughts And yet through the action of putting our pen to paper, they start to make sense. Something else starts to emerge from within the entanglement. And hopefully you'll find that that's the case here too. And and the other thing as well that I noticed when I reread it, was there is a line in it, which is about this, this small inner voice kind of crying out to me at the time that I wrote it, listen to me. And if you listened to the episode that I did with Sula Demetrius um, from the founder of Soulshine, I mean, it's a beautiful episode and I'll put a, a note about which 
uh, episode it was in the show notes so you can find it if you'd like to have a listen. I share about having a quite a major panic attack, the only one I've ever had, um, completely took me by surprise, as these things do. And one of the things that precipitated the, the collapse that I experienced was this loud inner voice shouting at me, listen to me. And my reflection was that maybe that voice has been trying to talk to me for quite a long time. And it was only in that moment of collapse as I was trying to climb up a very steep, very, very muddy slope um, that I really was forced to listen. And and I'm really grateful for having had that experience because it led to me doing some much deeper work um, with that voice and really starting to understand what was going on there. So I hope as ever that there is something in here that resonates with you. And and I think the other kind of real highlight from this piece of journaling is that for change to be possible, we have to be willing to change. And I've shared here before that that's something that I'll always um, either overtly or or ask or will be looking out for with the people who come to me for uh, coaching. I'll always ask what I'll be looking out for. Are they willing to make the changes that need to be made in order for them to move forward in the way that they most desire? And that really comes through for me in this piece of writing. And uh, maybe it will come through for you too. So I'm going to leave you here um, and and I'll come back at the end of the meditation and, and just close off this episode. So handing you over to day 48. This reflective meditation is a piece of writing from my journal. It is simply titled Day 48, Change. It is a series of reflections, thoughts, meandering, loops to explore what this experience of change really feels like and why it is something that we can embrace in order to better support ourselves. It is an unedited piece of writing from my journal and I share it in this way because I think it shows how our mind flows through from one reflection to another, but that through the practice of journaling, we begin to make sense of those thoughts. Day 48, change. This love, this loving kindness, this bravery, this fear, this worry, this endless agonizing over what needs to be done and when it needs to be done by, this flow, not this flow, but that flow, that stream of consciousness, never-ending thought, flooding, wafting, sifting, sinking, poking, eluding, drifting, sharpening, shaping. All because my mind is doing its job, the one it was created to do, to keep me safe. To identify sources of fear or hurt or pain or shame and say, stop This doesn't feel safe. I don't know what's happening here. I've lost control or I will not have control if you keep going in this direction, physical or metaphorical. And I don't like it. You're not listening to me. That childlike voice shouting and crying out because things aren't clear and I don't know who's going to look after me if I won't even listen to myself. 
Well, all that stuff is going on right now. But, you know, it's okay. And I need to trust that to make things happen, to make them change, takes courage. And to remember that my mind is beautifully, caringly, kindly doing its very best to look after me and make sure everything is okay. But what the mind can forget is that deeper knowledge that without risk, without putting ourselves into the unknown, without seeing what is around the corner or behind the door, all that happens is we just stay here. We don't grow. We don't shift. We don't learn. We don't expand our consciousness of ourselves or of the world around us. And if we only ever experience change as something that happens to us, then we are simply a passenger and we'll never get to fly the plane, drive the car, steer the boat, choose the direction of travel. And that can leave us without hope just carrying our baggage from place to place, building up the stuff we carry with us and never stopping to check we still need it all or choosing where we want to go. So our minds are wonderful things and it's good to know they're there to look after us. But living in fear stifles our creativity and empathy and joy. Releasing ourselves from that, while still acknowledging and thanking our mind for being there for us, releases us from old patterns, old beliefs, old behaviours. It opens us up to new experiences and new people and new opportunities. And without all that, we stay as we are. Which may be the right thing. It may be that everything, just as it is, is just as it should be. And that in itself is a wonderful place of peace, of harmony, of present. But my sense is that without being open to change, it's hard to get there. The change may be internal, a shift in thinking, breaking through some resistance that's locked in a thought or an emotion or a memory. It may be a tangible, practical change, a new geography, new role, new people. Or it may be that any one of those helps unlock another. The key is that if fear is holding us back from change, or from taking a new step, physical or metaphorical, then that is where we need to focus our attention and understand why we are trying to protect ourselves. Acknowledge it, love ourselves for doing it, thank ourselves for loving us so much that all we want to do is keep ourselves safe. And then with an arm around our shoulders, step forward, bravely, wisely, thoughtfully, open-hearted, with an open mind. So as ever, I hope that that has brought something for you, either something new or something that you've been aware of for a while, but it's shone maybe a little spotlight on it, or perhaps it's an old thought that keeps repeating and uh, something about it has resonated again for you, something maybe that is asking for your attention. The, the other thing that uh, is resonating for me as I listen again to that piece is the power of journaling. And I'm about to relaunch the journaling quest for compassion. 
It was a phenomenal success last year when I launched it first and I have received so many wonderful comments from the people who participated in it and I still get uh, comments from people saying how they have learned from it, how they have grown from it and also most critically how they have continued journaling and that they've found a new way of speaking to themselves with a far greater depth of compassion. And for me, of course, that's really what it's all about. So if you are part of the mailing list, then you're going to get a series of emails from me. And um, hopefully you'll sign up and do the quest and If you haven't already done it, I uh, hope this is going to be a wondrous new experience for you. And if you have already done it, you might like to sign up again and and go through the process again and see what your journal reveals to you this time round with the same set of prompts. Um, I love doing that. I think it's really fascinating to see how we've shifted um, as we move through our life and return to the same prompts, to the same questions and and just see what freshness arises. And if you're not already part of the mailing list and you'd like to receive some information about the journaling quest, then do come and sign up. Just come to the website hennyflynn.co.uk and pop your name and your email address into um, one of the places where you can join the mailing list. There are several on the site, depending on what you're most interested in. And um, and I'll send you some information about the quest and hopefully you can be part of this year's uh, group who will move through it together. And... I think that's probably it from me for now. It's always really funny coming to the end of a of a season. I have this uh, this mixed feeling of, um, you know, actually quite enjoying the idea of having a bit of a rest from creating these each week, and also this sort of sense of kind of missing everybody, missing you, um, and missing this connection uh, each week too. So. That means I'll be back sooner um, with season 10. So you take care, my darlings, and um, go gently, go kindly. And I send you a hug and a wave.